who is Dr. Nails Candela, please? Who am I? <laughs> uh, I'm a veterinarian. I've been a veterinarian for over 17 years now. How long do you want me to... Shall I start just telling my story now? Yes, Every, please. Everything? Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. So uh, I've been a vet over um, 17 years. Um, I, I am from Spain. I practice in Spain now um, because I, I worked in London as well. Um, and yeah, so I went to vet school in Spain, in Barcelona. Uh, and the first 10 years of my professional career, I was focused in emergency and critical care medicine, okay? So it was like pure conventional medicine. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I really liked this field. Uh, it's like, you know, like this life-threatening life situations and saving the patient and critical animals. And that I, I really, really enjoyed that a lot. Uh, that, that those 10 years I really enjoyed. Um, but it came to a point, well, the problem with this field is that you only get to work nights and weekends. So like the, you know, the, which is, which is, it doesn't make sense because there's critical patients during the day as well. <laughs> and then you have like general practitioners doing this when, you know, it should be done by a specialist. So I was a specialist in emergency and critical care. And I was, I think I was fairly good. Uh, and yeah, so I would say, probably around eight year nine of uh, practicing medicine in this field, I realized that um, most of the treatments that we uh, apply and that we um, provide in, uh, in conventional medicine, they're very simplistic and they basically, you have drug treatment of antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, whether they are steroids or non-steroidal um, uh, antibiotics, surgery, and then immune suppressant drugs, okay? So it was like, is this really what we do? Yeah, we, it's like, it's very superficial and it doesn't really get to the roots of the problem. So around that time, you know, I was realizing, you know, after a few years practicing that our treatment options were quite simplistic. And even I wasn't like in general practice uh, or dealing with chronic disease. Uh, I was just dealing with, you know, critical urgent cases where like um, conventional medicine excels in this field. Yeah. I mean, if you have a really, <laughs> if you have an emergency, uh, you don't worry about food. You don't worry about, you know, you just want, because that that's one of the, um, main characteristics of uh, conventional medicine is aggressive and it, 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 it is very aggressive. So in this context, it works amazing. And that's exactly what you do. But when it, go, when it comes to dealing with disease or promoting health, I think, you know, conventional medicine, that it, it makes it worse. It doesn't promote real health. Uh, and it doesn't take care of chronic disease in a way that really makes sense. It's only drugs, drugs that suppress the symptoms. You don't really get to fix anything really. And it's just maintaining animals on prescription diets and drugs. And that's the only thing that uh, conventional medicine does. And uh, in my experience and in my opinion, um, most of the times it makes the problem worse. So... So yeah, but, but anyway, going back to, you know, at the time I was realizing everything was quite simplistic um, and I was then living in London um, uh, and I was very like conventional, I was very conventional um, thinker, uh, but then I started practicing Chinese martial arts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know, I know. Uh, I, I practice a, a mixture of internal uh, Xingyi, um, Tai Chi, and Bagua. Uh, it was like uh, this teacher of mine just was taught a mixture, and then I went into Bagua Zhang, uh, which I really like, or like the circular movement or so on. Well, anyway, 
when that started, <laughs> when that started, um, for the first time, I started considering energy in a different way. Mm. Yeah. Well, up until that moment, I was like very scientific, like, you know, like very conventional uh, thinking. And, and yeah, for the first time, I started considering energy uh, in a broader dimension than just uh, equals mass. Uh, what is that formula from Einstein? I can't remember. So it was MC square. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, MC square, MCM was for mass and C was the, um, the, uh, the velocity of light. I, I can't remember. Anyway, so I started considering this. So my mind opened a lot then, back then, and I started, um, I started studying Chinese medicine for animals with the CIBT, the College of Integrative Veterinary Therapies, which is an online college uh, that is based in Australia. Uh, so I, I started working this and, and then for the first time I saw an approach to health that made much more sense than what we were doing in conventional medicine. So that was like the first, at that, around that time as well, <laughs> because, you know, it all, I think it all happened in like one, two, two or three years. Um, I come from a family where food is really important as in quality food, um, a lot of uh, Spanish culture moves around food. We, you know, in my family, the best food is always served in the table, the best wine, the best champagne is like, you know, for us it's really important. So I was brought up with the sense of the importance of quality food, high quality food. And around that time when I was in London, um, I started listening to naturopaths for, for, for people, yeah? Um, and, I, and I saw how uh, they used um, food to deal with disease, yeah? So how you, uh, yeah, like just nutritional interventions to deal with disease. And that, that's when I realized all of the things that you could do uh, with food until one day, of course, I was feeding my dog kibble. I had a cocker spaniel at the time. And I remember very well that moment. Uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't heard anything about raw food or fresh food for, for, for pets, even, even though it was already going in the UK. That was probably about 12 years ago or so. And yeah, I remember looking at, looking at uh, the... 12 kilo bag of society, society, well, uh, one of these um, popular brands, uh, because I had a dog that just put, wanted to eat all the time. Uh, I had this uh, aha moment, it's like, but wait, like, this is not food, you know? It's like, it's like this is not food, and this goes against everything that you know, I know about the importance of healthy food. I explored raw food for humans. And I, I, I started to experiment, you know, this like this uh, vegan raw feeding movement as well. So I started experimenting, you know, uh, stuff with myself as in, you know, this diet, this, uh, I've, I've tried now, I'm more like paleo um, approach. Uh, so, so yeah, I started experimenting and, you know, all of a sudden it was like this, what, what am I doing with my dog? This is, this is just not food. This, this, this is an ultra processed product. This is not food. This is not healthy. Yeah, because when you go into um, the human field, uh, you very easily, I mean, it's very well known in the human field that ultra processed products are bad for your health. There's tons of scientific literature that support this, even doctors that have no clue about nutrition because we get no actual training uh, whatsoever. We could say we, 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 could say we get no, no training. Um, uh, we, we, get, we get it, but it's not focused on health. Uh, so like even doctors that don't know much about nutrition know that you have to eat healthy food and not ultra processed food for health. Uh, but somehow in, in the vet community, 
this is still not understood, which is a disaster. Yeah. So, so yeah, it got lost. So yeah, that that was my aha moment. Um, and then I remember I at the time I was juicing a lot, so I started giving all the pulp from the you know the fruits and veggies to my dogs, mixed with meat and eggs and blah blah. And then I started investigating a little bit, and I saw the raw feeding movement and I, I realized that there were companies that were selling raw food and so on so I started buying them and I started feeding my dog commercial dog food about 12 years ago and since then there's been no coming back so well basically what happened then yeah so I started feeding my dog and I, I started feeding uh, raw food and then I started studying Chinese medicine so you know my my my, my mind started expanding uh and um, then I became a mom and I stopped working for about three years. I have twins um, and I wanted to be with them uh, in these you know, first years of their life uh, because I think it's really important. I went, I moved to Brazil, uh, long story. And then when they were a bit older, uh, I started at the time, so that was probably about seven years ago, studying, uh, just reading books because at the time um, I just read all the books that were, were available in terms of raw feeding. And then when I came back to work, because up until then I was working uh, emergency and critical care, starting studying other stuff, and then I stopped to be a full mom, like for uh, it was two and a half years and then I was I started to study then and when I came back to work uh, then I, I came back reinvented so it's like okay now I'm not <laughs> I'm not doing conventional medicine you know I, I, I I'm a person that I'm constantly absorbing information I'm always listening talking re, uh, uh, listening to talks reading, I, I, I can't stop absorbing information. It's a bit too much, I'm too, a bit too much for myself sometimes. It's like, stop it. Uh, and, and yeah, so I also think I, I understand concepts very easily. It's like, okay, I, I get it, I get it. And I'm brave, so I start applying, you know? It's like, I, I'm what I say, okay, somebody has to do it, okay? So I have this, attitude in life is like, okay, nobody's doing it, but someone has to do it. So I started doing it because I had no mentors or anything. Uh, but what I do is I always look at what's been done in the human field because a lot of the things that are happening in, in, in the human nutrition field, um, like, you know, ex excess carbs, excess um, ultra processed products and so on, the, the, there's a lot of scientific studies, they are true for people and we are omnivores. So imagine the impact of all these findings in human medicine that we are omnivores applied to carnivores. So there's a lot of principles that I can apply uh, to, our, to our animals, uh, which is no carbs, no ultra processed. These are very basic principles. And um, yeah, so I came back, I, I was very lucky, then I, I was back, back in my hometown, and I was very lucky, I started helping people online, I said this online service of helping people transition to raw food or fresh food, because I always work with, uh, with cooked food, I have no problem with that, um, and, and there's different models, I think we just lightly cook the food, okay, uh, but there is a room for it as well, and there is not a problem, um, so, and many, a lot of people are more um, into cooked food, so just give it the, the, the thing is, you need to give real food, minimally processed, that it's adapted to the species, okay? That, that, that's the basis of everything uh, when it comes to food. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so I was very lucky because just next to, next to uh, where I was living, like 10 minute walk, there was this vet who was much older than me. He was one of the first, um, one of the first vets in Spain that worked with acupuncture. Uh, so he was very open-minded and he would let me do whatever I wanted. So I, 
I, I, I, I, I happen to go back to work with this, you know, mindset of get of okay. Now I'm, 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 I'm I have this view on health. I have this view on nutrition. So I'm gonna, st I'm gonna start working this way. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I was so lucky. I didn't like working there much, but I was very lucky because he, I was free to do whatever I wanted to deal with the patients the way I wanted. I learned some th things from him. I, I, I studied actually a uh, postgraduate uh, degree at the University in Barcelona about uh, on acupuncture from this guy. Uh, but life like never really wanted me to go down the Chinese medicine path. Like I tried, like I tried different times, but life just wouldn't, wouldn't let me. And, and instead, like I focused on, on fresh food uh on the fresh food uh thing as, as a foundation you know element to health and to 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 work with disease and and yeah and life wants me to do this because it, it pushes me to do this so i'm doing this which i you know i really believe in this like i'm, I'm convinced and i well i know it's not it's not well, it is, everything's a belief, but I can see it in my patients. Uh, I guess conventional vets see things in their patients that I don't agree. But anyway, that's a matter for scientific studies that we need very much. So, so yeah, and that's the story. So since then, and that was about six years, six, six years, five years ago, I've been 100% like working relentlessly. I'm a really hard worker. I work a lot. So uh, uh, since then, I've been focused and I've been treating patients day and night uh, using like face-to-face uh, -face consultations. Also on, online, I've been doing telemedicine for about five years now, which mainly I focus on food, um, supplements and nutraceuticals. Yeah, I, that's the way I work. And, you know, wor worst case scenario, when nothing else works, if I have to, or the, 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 the clinical signs are too bad and, 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 and the dog or the cat doesn't have a good quality of life, then I'm going to add some drugs. Yeah, but that's like my last resource. Like what I do is trying to handle. And I, my main focus has been dealing with chronic disease using this functional approach. And, and the way I see it is, you know, uh, what I do is I'm practicing, I'm practicing functional medicine uh, to animals. Yeah. And, and, you know, seeing what it's done in, in, in the human field, applying and see what results I get, because it's, I'm experimenting, but, but at the end of the day, I'm experimenting with food, you know, it's not like an experiment something dangerous uh, I'm just seeing what works and doesn't and I my 80% of my patients now I specialize on dealing with allergies and chronic GI disease this is 80% of my patients uh, there is an epidemic of chronic disease and it all comes from the same place yeah it's the gut um, health, which is uh, our pets have a destroyed uh, gut health. And um, my focus is fixing this gut. So that's that's what I do most of the time. Of course, I, I deal with other diseases as well. I do preventive medicine and then focus on, on, on chronic disease. Most of them um, chronic uh, gastrointestinal disease and allergies which are related. It's, and it's about how to, how to be able to handle these conditions without drugs. And this is very possible. I do this every day. This would be the, like, <laughs> the summary of who um, I am. Dr. Kendall. Well, it... well, there's more, there's more, there's more. Then I'm president, for, <laughs> I'm president for the Raw Feeling Veterinary Society. I've been in the committee for about four years. Um, and, you know, last year I entered like this uh, wheel of junior vice president and president um, and so on. And with the, so I'm president this year and uh, as my baby, I am developing this master's degree in um, species appropriate nutrition, which is a very necessary thing because until we have something like 
proper studying because at the moment there is nothing like proper properly done uh like this movement won't be as strong so again i'm one of those persons that people that say okay what needs to be done i'll do it <laughs> sometimes i regret it but anyway i'll do it <laughs> you know i realize this is like a four-year job uh project until it sees the light so uh, i'm working on this at the moment uh you know taking like this position as a uh you know president that opens stores and um i have several consultants uh i have i have a um subcommittee uh for this project and well that's working we're gonna go the idea is to go for a foundation course to level up everybody um and and also to have like a tracking record because the idea is that this master's degree is backed by a university for credibility of course um so for that well it's not easy it's, it's quite complicated it's quite complex to get this actually done uh and basically we're gonna run this foundation course first to then be able to present to universities it's like okay these are our students this is how we are you know uh this is the curriculum these are the potential students for the masters please we need like someone to 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 back it up um and i'll take care of it and 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 then the university so this is one thing the Rofi Veterinary Society is a society that was born seven years ago and it's a, an association of vets and nurses um that believe and that know let's say that that raw food um and lightly cooled, like fresh food is is best for our patients because they are living beings, basically. You know, it's like we're like we're going to this very basic reasoning, you know, and the rest is all a lie. Uh, so, so yeah, I, up until now, like the the um, raw thing veterinary society um, has uh, run. We have been running like um, an annual conference. Which I've been in charge of organizing for the last uh, couple of years. Now uh, this year I'm not I'm not I'm not doing it because I'm too busy with the masters. Uh, but yeah, we run like this this annual conference. I encourage everybody. It's open to everyone, so I encourage everybody to um, to, to to attend the conference. It's usually um, held in November. I think it's 14th of November. If you go to the website. Uh, 3wrfbs.info you'll find um, all the information about the raw feeding veterinary society we have a really good uh, resource there which is called a uh, position statement a uh, position statement on raw feeding uh, where you where people can use that as a tool for their vets for you know it's a tool that just reference uh, reference as well it has uh, 62 scientific references so it's a good uh, document to use around uh, and there you'll find you can the, the old conference can be bought and and you can register not yet but the uh, for the next conference we just run a a free online event i don't know if you knew about it we just run a a, a free event um with the the goal of uh having this free information for vets that may be interested uh, but they're not willing to pay for this kind of education. So we kind of introduce like the common yeah, questions that vets ask uh, when it comes to raw food. So we made like a free event um, to hopefully get those vets um, potentially interested in the topic. Okay, and then I'm also a consultant for, for raw food companies. Um, uh, and I think that's it. I think that's all I do. So, yeah that's now i finished <laughs> that's so you are a mom you're a vet and you not just a, a, pra a practicing vet you you are the president of the raw feeding veterinary society you're creating um educational resources as well to promote raw feeding within your profession you know yeah. at the same time you're also reaching out to to your clients and the public in, in educating them as well um and you don't just have one child you have twins yeah that's a handful i i'm no I, husband no husband shall i say that no husband is he's not around it doesn't, it doesn't so you doesn't. you you are a single mom yeah wow i have huge there's a father there's a father that exists okay but i mean he's the biological someone. the biological donor yeah. somewhere yeah. 
No, not donor, not donor. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, you know, huge respect for you, you know, I can just listening to your story and I can see you, you're a very driven lady, you know, you yeah. and your name is a very unusual name. And, mm -hmm. you know, I could you share your name with the meaning with 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 everyone, because I think it's actually quite meaningful in a very, very like what you're doing. It's like your destiny or something. Destiny. Yeah, I think uh, so. It, well, my name means snow. And my surname is kind of fire or candle. Uh, candle candela? Yeah. Scandal. So, well, I don't know. I don't know how this is significant to what I'm doing. What do you think? Well, I think <laughs> I think it's nature in and young. I mean, even though you're not into TCM, yeah. but because what you're doing is functional medicine for animals you know mm -hmm. you're using food therapy which is yeah. a very you know it's it's a very simple concept it's just that it's not easy for people to to get around their head somehow you know sometimes like it's 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 actually not that difficult but because of the way commercial uh, pet food companies market their 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 wares they have ingrained in multiple generations that yeah. they must feed a balanced and complete meal and you can only get that if you buy their bag of kibble yeah that's bullshit the complete and balanced <laughs> yeah I, I i i i the more i look into this the more i realize that this is nonsense yeah and i, mean, I don't I, I, i've known like i'm very clear like I, 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 uh, I'm convinced about this. Uh, I've been convinced about this for years. But the more I look into it, the more I realize that this makes no sense. Like the, the, the complete unbalanced concept. But, but going back to, if you want, we can explore this in depth. Uh, but uh, going back to food therapy, well, really, we do this. We do this with prescription diets, supposedly. Right, I mean, mm. have a, a prescription diet for every disease. So really, this is accepted, but it's not done with uh, real food. So yeah. in that field, in vet medicine, we are, I'm alone, you know, <laughs> not alone, but like a lot of, a lot of, because again, I take what it's done in, in, in the human field and apply it. Um, what makes sense for a carnivore, of course, not, not doing vegan anything. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, actually the second year of the masters goes into this, like, you know, applying this clinical nutrition. And the feeling is that we'll probably end up with more questions than answers. <laughs> um, but because in that field, using fresh foods, all still needs to be done. You so. are a trailblazer, you know that? You are a pioneer in your field in Barcelona. Um, that's why I think your name is very powerful. You might not think that's a connection, but I think it's a very powerful name because you have the yin and yang, you have water and fire, and when you put it together, <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's a force of nature. You are a force of nature. Just listening to you talk, you know, I, you know, I, I just think that you're very, you're very focused lady. You know, when you want, when you know what you want, you just go, go, you just go for it. Yeah. And you don't stop, you know, and I, yeah, yeah. Um, how does it feel to be living in Spain Mm -hmm. and and being a lady and yeah. basically a single parent you know how how do you juggle all of that i mean i mean being a lady and living in spain is great <laughs> this is not a problem it's great um it is is about i'm too busy and it's a constant inner work for dealing with myself <laughs> if you know what I mean because it's a it's a it's a struggle I'm very driven 
perfect. I have clear ideas and I'm very driven and I'm very passionate and I do whatever it takes, but sometimes I'm too much for myself. <laughs> So then I, I like, why are you doing all of this? Like so much. And then it gets, but because I'm really convinced on what I'm doing, I'm not going to give up ever. So then I have no other option, but to, to work with myself, to be more productive, um, to be more efficient. You know, I have a little team, you know, that helps me. Um, I have like recently, I had a coach, you know, I hired a coach. It's like, it's like constantly working on myself to be, be to be able to um, do everything that I want to do. So uh, do you still practice martial arts? No, I would <laughs> love to. I would love to. I have like this pending, like the, the physical exercise. Uh, you know, I'm so busy that it's hard. I started horse riding, like it's, it's about this balance and I, I, I keep, I keep like, I keep fluctuating in this balance of, because my, 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 um, my natural, uh, my, my natural way of doing things is work, work, work. I can't help it. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a really hard worker. So, you know, my drive is always to work, but you know, like not, not that long ago, I, I was too unbalanced, but then there is the income thing and, you know, and, and it's, it's constant, it's constant, it's constant. constant. So your, your vet practice, is it just you as a sole practitioner or do you have other no, vet? No, what, what I, 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 will, I go, I only work and I've been like molding what I want to work with to the lifestyle I want. Okay. So. This I've been working for since I since I came back to work. When I came back to work, after being um, after stopping everything because I was um, I wanted to be with my children, um, I started working for someone else thirty hours a week. Yeah, typical like uh, working like week is forty hours a week. I started work for this guy, this acupuncturist. Uh, I started working like part time, but thirty hours a week, and. Before that, I had already started this online like telemedicine where it was mainly focused on, 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 on fresh food, helping people uh, switch to raw food whether, or cooked food, whether it was um, just uh, to preserve health or to go alongside whatever disease. Uh, and that was like a minimum amount of the money I was making. So I started this way. And five years later, I'm working for myself only. That's been two years now. Uh, so I'm freelance. And what I do now is I do online consultations like telemedicine uh, Monday and Wednesday, nine till five with my children at school. Then Tuesdays, I go to a referral hospital in Barcelona. And then I, I spend all my all day consulting. So I only work outside of the house, uh, outside, outside of my house once a week. I made that happen because that's what I want. And I, because of the lifestyle, I don't, I, you know, veterinarians, like clinical veterinarian, veterinarians like myself, we work Monday, Monday till Friday morning and afternoon, uh, you know, consulting uh, and then, uh, you know, weekends and you're on call and I didn't want any of that. Uh, and now I'm dealing with food, disease, functional medicine. There is no emergencies. If they have an emergency, they can go to a hospital. I know what it is about. <laughs> I'm, nothing that I do now. now. I'm doing the opposite, as you were saying, yin and yang. I was working 10 years for like emergency and critical care. And now I'm on the complete opposite of dealing with uh, chronic disease and doing preventive medicine. Now I'm on the other side, uh, doing what I think I have to do, not what they tell me to do. Um, so, so, so yeah, for me it was very important to, 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 to be able to work from home with my personal situation, being a single, single mom of twins, they are seven years old now. So 
Uh, so yeah, that's what I do. I do online uh, telemedicine uh, Mondays and, and, and Wednesdays. Then I do face-to-face -face consultation all day, full, boom, you know? I, I, do, I don't stop all day consultation after consultation once a week. I complement this with telemedicine if needed. Yeah, because I know my patients so well and, you know, if they need to go to, I'm always the other vet, if you know what I mean. I'm like, you know, they have like their local vet and people come see me from very far away. So, um, and I'm contacted from, you know, for telemedicine, but telemedicine I have now stopped. I, I cannot accept any more clients uh, for any vet, like listening to this, I'm overloaded with work. This is, a, this is a field that you need to go into uh, because there's a really high demand for it. And, you know, I, I, I just cannot accept any more clients um, for telemedicine. It's just impossible uh, just because I want to do other things and I do other things, you know, then I decided to open myself to the uh, com, um, companies for opportunities and also um you know to be able to make more money and to have a positive impact um in the health of animals because i don't know how it is in singapore but uh, i think it's everywhere in the world it's the same there's raw food companies that do it well and there's raw food companies that do it really badly so it is a, a also a way you know to be able to counsel companies uh, to have a positive impact in in health of dogs and cats because they're going to do it anyway so yeah, so basically, and 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 I try to. I'm very organized, and I well, there's no other way, right? I you, I need to structure uh, my working time and do it do it as efficient as possible. Uh, and then yeah, like Thursdays are the days that I try to focus on something and not talk to anyone. Thursdays and and Wednesdays I don't talk to anyone. I spend Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday talking to clients, talking to people. I try not to talk to anyone. On, on Thursdays to be able to study, to be able to sit down with a project for a couple of hours. Um, and then when, uh, Fridays, I'm trying to, uh, I got to a point, I don't know if it's gonna work out, I'm trying now but to have them for myself. So I started course writing. I, it's something that I wanted to do like forever. So now I try that Fridays, you know, I start, leave my children at school, go horse riding. And I do this Western horse riding. Uh, it's really cool. And then I try to do things for myself because I have a, to do things like personal things to do. This at least is so huge that it never gets done. And as a, you know, as I said earlier, it's a constant, constant um, reframing. How am I working? How productive I'm being, you know, dedicate them to the family. Like, you know, except for Tuesdays, all afternoons I'm with my children. I started, I'm starting now a mentoring program for vets <laughs> as well. I know. You're awesome. You rock. Uh, like I said, your name is very powerful. You might not think it, but I actually do think your name is very symbolic. It, it actually is you. You might not think it, but I think it really, it is you, you know, your essence is there. Yeah. yeah. Mm, maybe. Should be. Uh, then... Yeah, I st I'm starting. I'm starting next week. Actually, this is a new thing because I work a lot with inspiration as well. So I, I, I felt there's this need of um, mentoring vets uh, that are going into this field, and you know, people give some courses and so on, but um, there is no actual like probably because I feel so alone. Well, now, now I feel more confident in what I do. I see results, you know, I have experience. Uh, but when I started, I was, I was feeling so alone. You know, I had no mentors, uh, vet, 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 veterinarians. Um, and I feel that there is this need, you know, people study because there's no proper education either. Like people study these, people study that. There's like people like me. I used to, I used to teach as well. Now after COVID, uh, well, I do. I run some master classes sometimes online, always in Spanish. Like I'm, I'm not in the English speaking world. Someday I will, but uh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, so I run master classes online, um, and uh, well, and then I realized uh okay there's this there is this need for vets that you know every day like it's good news more and more vets look into this and start working with fresh food and so on 
so I detected this um, this need of just support, you know, just support. Uh, and so I came up with this idea of running like this um, weekly um, Zoom uh, meetings with vets to talk about this and to talk about like real clinical cases and just to share my experience, um, see what I can do to help. Um, and also, you know, I think it's going to be a learning experience from everyone. There's people that come from the Chinese medicine background, people that have studied something, some people uh, but don't have much experience in applying all they have learned to, because one thing is, you know, and, and this I think is missing in a, in a lot of teaching is, okay, here you have the course and after, after that, what, you know, I think people need some support in those questions that arise when, you know, we are dealing with patients, you know, it's, uh, so, so, so having some support from someone that knows more than you um, is very important and very reassuring and, and, and helps. So I'm going to start this next week. Uh, so I'm doing this like a uh, weekly meeting with vets to help them. I want to like to do, to, do like a video co course first for vets and then do this. But I was like, look, if you're happy with it, I'll, I'll explain what I do along the way <laughs> because I don't have time to do the course beforehand. So if you like it, uh, let's do it this way. And yeah, looks like I have about 20 vets um, interested for now. Uh, so I'm gonna start and I'm gonna experiment and see what happens with that. What What is... Uh... You're in Latin, you're, well, you're, you're, in, you're in Spain, and, hmm. but what is your, your impression of the raw feeding movement in, in Spain itself at the moment? It's growing. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's growing. Uh, the market here and the movement here, as in proper, let's say when the first uh, raw food company appears, yeah, um, which is an indicative of that things are moving in that direction a bit more strongly. That was probably about uh, 12 years ago or something, or 10 years ago, around that time. Um, yeah, it's getting, well, it's the trend, is the trend is like this everywhere, yeah? Like I, I talked to PFMA, the Pet Food Manufacturing Association um, in the UK. I have a lot, you know, because the Raw Feeding Veterinary Society is based in the UK. I've worked in the UK, like I have a very close connection with the UK. Um, I'm very much aware of, you know, market trends um, and I work with companies as well. So uh, it is growing very much like everywhere in the world um, and here as well. It's just, you know, in Spain and all the uh, Spanish speaking countries, we are always about 10 years behind uh, the English speaking countries. That's what it is in everything. Um, but we are picking up, we are picking up. But it's nothing, it's nothing compared to UK, compared to the States, like it's nothing. I think so, there's about 20 companies here now uh, and more and more people, you know, are interested in this topic. And as I say, like, I cannot accept any more clients. You know? So what, is there an FCO uh, equivalent um, in the Spain, like a pet food regulation in, in Europe. In yeah, Europe. because you're part of UK. You're in part of um, Euro, isn't it? Oh, well, no. UK left. The UK left uh, <laughs> a few months ago. But other than that, yeah, we have <laughs> Brexit. Yeah, uh, yeah, Brexit. Uh, but but yeah, we are um, in the same like the Euro. Yeah, we have like this um, the European Union, like the commercial. Um, European. Uh, so yeah, and we have like European regulation, which is very similar to AFCO, which is, is very similar. Do you find in Spain um, the quality of uh, the food um, supply that you get, the quality, is it cleaner? Is it better? For animals? Yeah, for animals or humans, you know. Is Clean, cleaner it, than where? Than where? say in the US or the UK? No. Well, in the US, I've never lived. I've been there for a few months. In the UK, no, no. I think we have the same options. 
it's just a matter of spending more money. Okay. You know, when you eat to, when you want to eat quality and healthy, you have to spend quite a lot of money. Right. Um, and I think we have the same. No, I don't think we have cleaner foods or no. Uh, but you know, in Spain, we have this really rooted culture around food. You know, like the other day, I was thinking, like every time of the year has a has a typical food. You know, we move from from typical Season. food to typical. Yeah. to celebration of this celebration of that and let's meet around the table we are in a culture of meeting around the table and enjoying food and drinking um, very much like the italians and the french okay so in that sense um i don't know that you know in depth other like countries and gastronomical like culture but uh, you know, this is not so much in the UK, for instance, you know, this importance of food and the gathering around food. Uh, I don't think this is this is as strong um, in, in other countries, in, in, in Spain, Italy, France. This is very important part of the culture. So Again. your your clients, um, if they came from, say, a commercial fat diet for their animals, when you advise them or you want to you know transition them and educate them on uh food therapy new functional food um is it easy for them to convert or do you find there's a resistance to convert from commercial from, yeah no? yeah to like say you kibble can... kibble dry food they maybe they ah, been... oh yeah. no oh kibble kibble uh, no no well they come to see me i don't convince anyone they come to me already convinced I don't have to convince anyone like people because I'm quite active in social media as well mm -hmm. <laughs> because you have to nowadays yeah. um well it's, it's the door it's the door to say hello this is me and this is what I do um so people know me from social media and uh they already come I don't have to convince anyone never I don't I don't really spend my time convincing anyone they will come already convinced to me because they are looking for other options, you see. Mm. They, they, they are looking for alternatives because com uh, conventional medicine is not working. And when vets go to, when the, my clients go to, because of course I attract that type of client that has this education about real health, that when they go to conventional vet, they can't believe what they are listening, you know? Because people that have this, you know, education and, and knowledge about healthy foods and healthy li lifestyle, and they try for themselves to avoid unnecessary drugs, and they go to the to the a chiropractor, they go to an acupuncturist, they eat really well. Of course, these are my clients. I don't need to convince them of anything. So. So who who inspires you? Because you you are such a driven lady, you know. What who what inspires you every day when you get up and just psh, rocket science out? <laughs> it's natural for me. I I'm very. Uh, it just happens for me. So I'm just super driven. Um, so no, I don't have to do anything. I have to. I have to stop myself um you, but but you know what really moves me in general in life and is freedom and truth mm. this is what moves me wow. you you're an amazing lady dr kendler you, you truly are um your your kids wow uh <laughs> very they have a role model in you, uh, honestly, especially with the way the world is today. Most people, you know, with COVID, they usually get very uh, negative and they sort of feel sorry for themselves or the situation. But I don't see that with you. It's like you're constantly thinking, being very creative on how to solve problems. What can you do yeah. next, you know, to move the needle forward, you know, in not just one aspect of your life, but different aspects because I can see that you you've actually crafted your work and your, your work your professional and your personal life in such a way that you you can 
you know, be a mom at the same time. You can spend, you can focus on your children, you know, um, but at the same time, it gives you that flexibility where you've made it, you know, um, you've, you've created a lifestyle, you know, with, with your work. Um, it's, it's all inspiring, honestly. I mean, like, I'm trying to do that for myself as well, you know, and I know it's not easy because every day, you have to be extremely conscious with your intention of what you intend to do with your time. And we mm. all have 24 hours in a day. There's no extra time, but it's how you make use of your time. And I see yeah. the way you, you, you know, and I think that's the beauty for, for people who are parents like mothers and for you, you know, a working single mom, I like big, huge respect for you because you are, you, you know, you're the kind that have, have a have mastered not ma have a, a an edge above most people because you are so aware that every minute spent has to be spent well, even if you spent it to for your R and R and relaxation and like I want time off I needed time off I want to go horse riding you know but <laughs> it's important it's important you see because you you make that time you know and. Well, I struggle huh? so yeah, sometimes. I, I, like, yeah, I it's tend, struggling. I struggle, well, I struggle constantly, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it's not that beautiful. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think it comes with personalities as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I have a personality that makes it easy, you know, uh, but then I have to deal with myself in other ways, you know, tend not to overwork. You know, I, I think probably a couple of months ago, I was, I, I, I was almost burned out, okay? <laughs> so... But then I realize, and it's okay. I stop, <laughs> and this and that, and it, it, and it's a constant dance with life, you know. This yeah. and that, and I, and now I want to move here, like you know, this freedom, uh, you know, this way, this lifestyle I created allowed me to move. I moved seven seven months ago to the place I really want to be. Um, and, 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 and it's really satisfying, you see, but it's a lot of hard work. Uh, it's hard work, you know? Yeah. And, and also, my, my, you know, we all have our challenges. And then, you know, there's personalities. Um, you know, I have a very driven personality. So in that sense, I don't need, like, extra motivation. It just pours, you know? It's like, I have to do this. Um, and for other people, the hard thing will be, uh, getting that motivation uh, for me that's not an issue because because it comes out naturally um, but then my struggle is not overworking myself and you know looking after myself uh, we all have I think you know what makes it easy is 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 like truly believe what you want and and, and what you want for yourself, for your life, for, for your career. Um, but yeah, I, I, but I see that it's a matter of personality. Like, you know, this, this what that I do is not for everyone. You know, it looks like now everybody has to be an entrepreneur because that's what I am at the end of the day. Yeah. But I realize this is not for everyone really. So it's about also, you know, knowing yourself and see whether this is something for you because it takes guts <laughs> it takes a lot of effort and it takes a huge responsibility so there's some personalities that will find very hard to do this just because of the personality there's nothing wrong or right about this uh, but some personalities like you know i have people in my team that are, they're good, but they just don't have this drive to put themselves out there and do things, you know? And this is something that goes with the personality. So, uh, you know, there's people that um, will just be happier. It, it, it all sounds amazing, but it really is what you want in life. Like if you want not to worry so much about things and, you know, have a quieter life. My, my mind doesn't stop, you know? So 
it really depends. It's choosing is knowing who you are, what you want in life, you know, being 100% honest and see how you can make that work. Uh, because this, you know, again, this is what I do is not for everyone. You know? Yeah, what are you most passionate about right now that you feel that, you know, um, it's like one of your, on your high priorities that, you know, it's driving you so much? In life? With life, with work, you know, your mission. Because mm. you're doing so many things. You know, being the president of the uh, Raw Feeding Veterinary Society, being an educator, being a mentor, you know, uh, you've you've actually covered you you've covered so much. You know, you you're you're a trailblazer. I, th- I no, I think is 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 going back to we to what we have already you know been talking about is 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 being as free as possible in my personal life, financially, and in the way I work, because I couldn't do this if I was working at a regular practice, you see? That's why I'm a freelance, <laughs> because, so my, 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 and again, that's again what moves me, is being able to, um, is being free, to live how I want, financially free, that's another step. (laughs) Uh, And to work exactly the way I want to work. This is is what really moves me, to be free and to be truthful to myself and to have a positive impact um, in, in the health of animals. You know, I came here to heal dogs. That's, that's the, sen- the, the sentence, more than cats, okay? Like, um, I don't feel so connected to cats. Of course, I work with cats, and I like cats. Uh, I love animals, uh, all animals in general. But I feel a special connection with dogs. And, you know, like, the sentence is, this is the sentence. I came here to heal dogs. That, that, that's that in my professional um, life. I've always felt this connection with dogs since I was very, very little. I would already, you know, uh, buy a magazine each month, uh, the world of dogs, you know. I'm a, I don't have dog right now. I don't have any pets uh, because I don't have time. Uh, I, you know, I, I just can, I barely can I look after myself. I cannot look for, I look after another animal. Uh, so, so, so yeah, this is, this is my, my priority and it's been my priority for over the last five years, really. It's like, you know, be as free as possible to work the way I want, to live the life I want. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and being a good role, role model for my children, <laughs> I try. I do my best, but I'm, I'm not that amazing. I mean, uh, you know, I can be in a really bad mood. Oh, I, I believe to, that you, 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 are, you, are, you are fire and water combined. You know, that's an explosive personality. And yeah. I, but the thing is, I, what I, but I do admire the fact that you are so self-aware of who you are, you know, and, and, you know, you, you know, when that, when you're going like too much burnout or too tired, you 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 recognize that and you try to dial it back. You know, you're learning, you're learning from your mistakes. What's your what would you say is your biggest life learning mistake ever? Being too impulsive, like to not 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 chilling the ideas um being too fiery the, uh, that that that's that you know when i feel something when i have an idea and inspiration i feel it like super strongly and in the past you know i go all for it always but sometimes i'm 42 now so uh, you look amazing like, by the way <laughs> 
Thank yeah. you. I think my biggest learning has been, okay, when you have like this, like super strong drive, um, chill. Yeah, and, 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 and rationalize it a little bit. Um, is, 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 is it because I'm very mental, but I'm also very impulsive. So like, I, I, I you know, I think my biggest um, learning in life is, is, okay, maybe take it easy, <laughs> you know, just wait, wait and see. And I, I is learning to also to read life. And I say, I'm going to explain that a little bit. I learned that, as I was mentioning with the acupuncture, you know, you want to do something, you know, I studied, I studied, I studied, I worked with a guy that, that was supposedly really good that then it turned out he was not. Um, with acupuncture and I try, I, I was trying and trying and trying but then you have to be able to read when life is telling you, no, it's not. This is this is not this is not the the, the, the path to follow. You know, I learned to listen to life to 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 see what what. Okay, so I have this this really cool idea because I always have ideas. I have this idea, and then because the way I am is like, okay, let's chill. Okay, first of all, and then start working on it, start putting time into it and see what life, uh, how life responds. If it supports you, you go for it. If after trying for a while, it's not happening, it's not happening, it's not happening, then that's it, yeah? It's not about, it's not, about uh, not insisting in something that you want, but it's recognizing when life is saying you, no, this is not the path. You need to take that other path. Yeah, I think this is more like when I have an idea, when I have, when I feel this drive, chill, start working, and listen to life. Is this where I have to go? Is life supporting me? Is life not supporting me? Um, like a life skill. But that's for my uh, the way I am. Well, I think everyone should learn that life skill, to be honest. I think it, it would make more people self-aware of who they are, you know, and more honest about themselves. I think a lot of people are not brave enough to actually look within themselves to know, you know, to acknowledge where they are in the present and where they actually would like to go, you know, towards the future, what kind of future they want. And I think, like I said, that's why I respect you a lot because, you know, you make the most out of your situation. It might not be ideal because, you know, no one has an ideal life, but you, you, you create opportunity for yourself. Hmm. You don't just wait and complain and feel sorry for yourself, you know, and a lot of people do that. You're different, you know, and, and that's what I admire and respect is that, you know, like, okay, there's a fuck up here. Let's figure out, how, you know, what can we do next? You know, it's not working for me. Okay, let's look at something else. And the fact that you're not afraid to do that, you know, to realize when something isn't going, the, the, it doesn't feel natural, it's not going with the flow, you know, um, and that is life. Life is going with the flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until, yeah. I, uh, things that are true, see, I mean, it has to be easy. Mm. When, when you have to struggle too much, too much is no. When, when, when things that are meant to be are easy. Yeah. Oh. And, you know, I, I, I am so excited because of all the projects that you have, you know, like mentoring vets, you know, um, um, Let's see what happens. I experiment a lot. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I, I, this was an inspiration. I put it. I put up a post on the so, on social media. I'm gonna do this. Who's interested? Um, and I got a lot of emails. Uh, and then after the idea, again, you see, this is what I do. It's like, yeah, 
I have this idea. Uh, and after that, after seeing, uh, I've been working a month on, okay, now how the hell am I going to do this? You know, it's like, <laughs> how the hell am I going to do this? And then I start thinking, like, like outlining, well, I, I, I have a, someone in my team that, she's amazing at this stuff like i'm so grateful i have her you know it's like she does all the you know the emailing the stripe the payment system the well and she has this vision um so it's really good and i i'm actually all all the people i work with all people in my team are clients ex-clients which we started with um with what's the uh What's the word with an exchange? It's like, okay, you can, you can help me with this. I will take care of the dog for free. And we exchange services, okay? Butter treat, butter. Yeah, yeah so butter, yeah, yeah, all my, all, 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 I have three, uh, three, um, three ladies uh, collaborating with me. I have my assistant. I have the, I have someone that is like, she deals with like the healthy animals as in for the food online because I don't work with healthy animals online a long time ago. Uh, so I have this, uh, this lady that, uh, you know, does, I, I supervise. Uh, and if she, this is what I say, you know, she's very knowledgeable, but she just doesn't, is, she's not brave enough to go on her own. She, her personality needs someone to oversee her to have someone she can ask and that's how we are you know like we have our personalities we cannot fight against our nature either so uh, so i have this lady uh, that does this and you know still working with the dog uh and 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 so that's that and the lady that edits the video helps me with all the like the campaigns the mail campaigns or right? I'm, I'm i'm helping her with her dog as well so all the so uh, one of my assistants, the dog is sorted long time ago, uh, and now I'm paying her. But all the people that collaborate with me, that help me, I had like an exchange service of okay, I help you with your dog, you help me with this. Oh, that's um, brilliant! That's brilliant. Yeah. And, and 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 it works with, and I've been like super like super lucky. Well, I guess there's not lucky lucky, but you know, like my assistant, she's like, Nails, I want to help you. I want to help you. It's like I cannot pay you. But yes, I want to help you. And I cannot pay you now. Yes, I want to help you. So it's like, okay, help me. Um, and I'm so grateful for for her. You know, like dealing with all the inquires. Um, and again, it's all about being more and more productive and, um, and yeah, and it's working so well, you know, like it's, it's working really well. I'm super happy with my assistant, super happy with uh, this lady that, um, yeah. and they, 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 they turn to be really good at they, what they do, you know? And, and I guess also like the, the type of relationship we have is, is a big difference. Like, like I'm hiring you for this, you know? We get to know each other with this client, like for, for, for the animal. And then, you know, the relationship evolves in, in, in other ways. Um, and I guess maybe this like trust and getting to you know, be knowing each other for a while um, leads to a good working relationship. I, mean, I, could, I couldn't do anything without, well, not anything, but I mean that they are helping me a lot and scale, and I have a lot of ideas that I just cannot uh, bring into. I have, you know, writing a book, uh, video courses. <laughs> I mean, the, the the possibilities are endless, endless, endless. There's so much you can do, you know. And you know if just listening to you makes me very excited and, and, you know, very, very, I don't know, very positive because yeah, you have, you know, all these ideas and, 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 you know, but I, I love the fact that you are very forward looking and you're very entrepreneurial. You're very, you know, you look, it's like, you know, you need to do something, but you're not good at certain functions as you know, and that's why you have a team. And, you know, getting the team together to help you take care of the, the roles that, 
you know, that will tie you down and, and it's not your passion, you know, but it's essential work to, to move, you know. Well, it's the, it's the, it's the constant work, it's like yeah. the constant reevaluation. How is this going? How can I do this? And then things like opportunities come like this. Like I wasn't looking for an assistant, but she kept insisting. She, you know, she didn't have a job. And at the time she was bored. It's like, what is bored? She was bored. <laughs> uh, uh, and it's like, let me help you, let me help you. Um, I, I have this like really cool relationship with my clients. Like I feel super lucky with my clients. We, we, we have this relationship that we feel really lucky to have each other. Uh, because they are the perfect clients because they are because we match profiles so well and there's not many vets that work this way mm. you know they feel so lucky that they finally found a vet that goes that is aligned with their thinking and, and their view of health and disease and so on and the way to to deal with the animal um, and of course they are amazing clients for me because they do everything that I say they are 100% dedicated to their animal like my clients are amazing they do everything I say they never question anything anything it's like do this do that and they do it perfectly and they do whatever it takes it takes me I was I, I was I was realizing I've been realizing lately especially with these uh, patients that I work the most, like this, these patients with chronic, uh, chronic diarrhea, chronic reflux, abdominal pain, which is an epidemic. Um, I was realizing, you know how long it takes me to heal these dogs? You wanna have a guess? A few months? No, more, more. Wow, really Take bad me. cases. It takes me a year. Wow. I've been realizing this. And a year means the dog is symptom free. I mean, no diarrhea, no pain, no reflux, no vomiting. And the dog is eating a variety of foods. I mean, he's not eating rabbit. That's it. Okay. Mm. He's eating a variety of diet. Um, it takes me a year. And, and it's stable. And my clients follow me to this. I don't know, this is like a self-discovery thing. I didn't, I didn't know how much, of, but is you, you just try, yeah? Because like there is the phase of these patients, especially, you know, chronic GI patients, these patients, first you need to stabilize the patient. That means uh, the, the patients I see is like, hello, my dog is six years old. And it's had diarrhea once, once a month, all of his life. These are my patients. Mm. They're like really ill. So there's like this first phase of stabilizing, say, I mean, being fit symptom free. So they go into the, and I have developed this protocol, which is not difficult. So like the first is, you know, changing to a diet that's going to suit the dog and stabilizing the problem with supplements and nutraceuticals without drugs. And that probably takes me about two or three months, depending on the dog. So, so they finally, after years on one single protein food, the dog is fine, finally. But then after that, you could stay there. But after that, because I don't believe in the complete unbalanced concept, uh, you need to provide variety, right? You cannot be with a single protein all of your life. So then after that, you, then I try and I do like an, an elimination diet and I do two months each protein to be okay, this is fine, this is fine as well, this is not good, go back to go back to square two and now try something else. So, you know, with all the supplements, which are not many, there's a misconception that you need to give a hundred million supplements to a raw fed animal or fresh fed animal. That's not true either. Um, and 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 you know, 
until I'm uh, the dog is, you know, symptom free, things happen in the way, because of course, sometimes you try something that doesn't work. So you have to go back and start again, try something. So that uh, takes me a year. It takes me a year, but finally the dog is on no medication, it's cured, um, eats a vari variety of fresh foods, and it's fine. And, and then I just see them once a year. Uh, but yeah, it takes me a year. Wow. So I, I, have, I have these clients that, you know, they are with me for a year. <laughs> we, they, they are amazing. They are amazing. But again, they come from a place where they have an education on health and, 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 and nutrition. And then they've been, to, they've been through conventional medicine for years. And it never works. And the, and the vets don't, don't give any answers to the problem. Mm. And they don't even understand the problem. Mm. 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 I, so, well, they stick to what works and they are like super dedicated, you know? It's like, yes, I have to do it, okay. And because there are results, of course, they stay. Um, but yeah. You're means, very, yeah, yeah but... You know, you that means you're very patient with them. You know, your your clients, uh, especially when you're transitioning and doing the elimination diet and stuff, because it it takes a lot of, you know, like you, your patient, because you recognize that okay, uh, we might get a bit of setback depending on the reaction the dog has to the food. So you know, we dial it back and then we start again. You know, and again, that is an that that is a, a an amazing mindset to have because not many people are patient you know like when they say like oh my dog is not well and i they always assume that um i switch them to raw and end of story you know but oh. then when they switch to raw they say hey no my dog is still having all this crap it's not working and then they give up easily and you know they oh they no 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 you see, my, my 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 consultation like oh, all of my clients they most of them they already eat fresh food or raw food and they are not fine anyway. Mm. Of course, I mean, those that, those that, but, and then, then it's this time of month. Sometimes it doesn't take me a year. A year takes me the really bad ones. Okay. Mm. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, my, 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 my consultation room is full of uh, dogs, mainly dogs because cats will, will be a minority in this. We can talk about this. Uh, um, but yeah, it's like, no, no, no. It's like, you know, I've been feeding my dog raw since it was born and it has all these issues. Or I've been, you know, it, it was eating kibble and I switched to uh, fresh food and it still has this problem. So a lot of my clients have, that's why they come see me, right? If the problem was sorted. But there is ways, of course, to, to, uh, to sort to sort it out. The problem is how many vets actually know how to do this. That's why I'm doing the mentoring to see if I can teach what I do. I don't know how many vets will be willing to work the way I do, read for real. Um, but well, I'm trying. You see, and because I cannot absorb any more clients, I'm gonna. You know, is this feeling of okay, we. Of course, the masters will come, but I have to teach other people what I do so they can do it, you know, because I just can't, uh, I just can't, and, and, and I'm a bit, I'm a bit it's very, like, uh, demanding emotionally to deal with this sort of patients with these very demanding as well clients. I give it all, but they ask for it all, but uh, although I, I, I but I, I also learned to put limits, yeah? It's like, this, this, this is very, um, it's a delicate, like, you know, where you put the line with your clients. Um, and yeah, and I've been the, like the system of, of, of dealing with this, I've been perfecting over the years as well. You know, you start one way, this is like the mentoring for vets is gonna start one way and it, it will have its own, um, uh, evolving process like the way I deal that the, the way I do telemedicine today um, is 
fairly different to when I started because of all these re-evaluation process, efficiency, productivity, what works, what doesn't, how much to charge. And I think the key is like the constant review for constant improvement, but then on the inside, and my struggle is this uh, constant um, feeling of imperfection because everything could always be better, you see? Yeah, it's like you have this drive of uh, improving, 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 which is great, but if it doesn't let you enjoy what you have and the way you do things already, that's a struggle. It's like, and, and again, it's like, you know, different personalities, different challenges. Um, it's about knowing what you do, who you are, what are your weak points um, to work with them. So you specialize in gastrointestinal problems, basically. I, I could yeah. say. So. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it's, it's a very, um, very specific like target in that sense that you, you've like in a niche that you've, you've created for yourself with your clients. It happened naturally. <laughs> it's amazing. It, it, I mean, I, I, I deal with because what I do with fresh food is I do preventive medicine. Okay, let's get this puppy from the beginning. I follow the growth of all my puppy clients. Mm. Puppy clients? No, my puppies. My, yeah, my, my puppy clients. Puppies. Yeah, your puppy clients. Puppy yeah. I, follow, I, I, I follow the whole uh, growth of my puppy patients. I see them usually about once a month, once every two months, to, see, to check how they are growing, to see how the owner is doing it with the food, if it's right, if it's not, and I follow the, the whole growth. And then that's preventive medicine. Um, then we don't you know, vaccinate routinely. We, we, we check for, um, you know, we check for, uh, see whether there is um, antibodies from, you know, the vaccine last year, I don't just blind vaccinate my patients and we assess, okay, it's not uh, protected for this disease, how much of this disease is where we live, you know, and it's all very proactive. And I think one of, one of the things that my clients appreciate the most also is honesty. Yeah, it's like, and I tell them when I cannot do anymore, you know, it's like, okay, I cannot do anything else. I, I'm, I'm, I'm out of resources. Now go try that. But anyway, no. Uh, so preventive medicine, and then, um, and then uh, I, I, you know, wh what I do them, I, I uh, adapt food to the particular disease. So what I do the most is um, what I do the most is for adaptation for kidney disease. That you know, you go with the uh, kidney disease stages. Liver disease, they are very prevalent as well. Um, and then, well, there's a range of diseases like diabetes, obesity, um, autoimmune disease, all of that. They, it's just the standard, the base is like the standard raw food. You don't need, um, you know, anything. If you work more with supplements and, and nutraceuticals and feeding strategies is really important. The feeding strategy is super important. Not only what you feed, but how you feed this to the dog or the cat is super important. Feeding strategies is one of the one of the main things that I use as well. Um, and then this is all learned from the human field, and I try I try with with uh, with my patient. Uh, and then naturally, all the dealing with uh, with chronic diarrhea, especially. I think I've mastered this bit. Uh, um, and then, you know, the reflux, the vomiting, this still, uh, I struggle a bit more, uh, but I do, I'm very, uh, I'm good at fixing this as well. And a lot of times you have both, uh, most of the times you have both, but it's not something that is the demand thing is, you know, I have to say it probably took me three years of experimenting with my patients to get to where I am now, that I know exactly what I have to do to, to, to fix a chronic diarrhea. Because nobody told me anything. So I had to, okay, I tried this, I tried that, I tried, until I found the formula that, you know, um, and it's, it, it's been a demand. I mean, there's, it's, it's an epidemic, like the, um, 
the chronic uh, gastrointestinal problems is an epidemic. And because food plays, a, it's, it's so obvious that food is so important for, for chronic GI disease. Um, I've been getting a lot of these clients over the years. And, and when I started being really good at it, of course, it's the word of mouth. It's like, go see her, go see her, go see her. And now it's like, it is, 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 is 80% of my clients. So it's not something that I looked for. It's something that happened. Wow. But, you know, it's really a culmination of your hard work. You know, what you have yeah. today, what you've achieved today, it's, it's all really, you know, because you work so hard, to, to figure things out, to, you know, like you said, keep evaluating, evaluating and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, you know, yeah. and, until, until yeah. you've got your protocols, you've got, you know, your experience to, to recognize certain things, certain patterns, you know. Yeah, uh, that's, that's yeah you know, it's not for the faint-hearted what you do. Definitely not. Like you said, not everyone can do what you do especially you know being being a being a mom and and everything you know um and what i what i truly respect is you know that ultimately you want freedom yeah you want freedom and you and you always have that 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 goal in mind that i want freedom to do whatever i want in life you know yeah so you craft everything from your personal to your professional in such a way to give you that freedom, to work towards that freedom, you know, and huge respect, huge respect, honestly, because for those people who think it's easy, it's not easy. The, the constant no. self-evaluation in your head, I understand that because, you know, I've, I have a similar issue where I'm always self-reflecting and thinking, you know, like, um, I need to work and I'm nothing like you. I'm not as motivated like you because I, I am a procrastinator, you know, so trying to get, that that momentum going, that drive going, yeah. it's a challenge yeah. for me. Yeah, you know, and um. you know, I hold you up as as an, a shiny, you know, example, really. But it is natural, so it's not that much of a. <laughs> you know, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. Yeah. I'm lucky. I have this easy. Um, uh, but but yeah, but then I have to work on on other things. So you have to work on this um yeah look, look look for well i don't know what you've done but look for specific help on this and focus on this only and once you've mastered this then you go to something else it's not but i guess it's the focus yeah that you mm. like focusing on the procrastination for instance mm. or whatever is like the main thing and 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 do and do this and focus and focus on this on this and then there's get someone to help you as in a coach, I got myself a coach. I, I was, I, I, I was um, the other day. I was listening. I listening to a lot of people talk, and and, and I was uh, when I'm around, you know, cleaning the house, and I, I need to get someone to clean the house for me. When I'm cleaning the house or cooking around or whatever, I'm always listening to a podcast or someone. Mm. I'm always absorbing information, and I, I was uh, I was listening to this guy which is a digital nomad school. <laughs> and then I realized it was a digital nomad. You know, it's like, I'm pretty much a digital nomad. Not, not 100% because I have children. And I, you know, it was like, okay. So, and the guy was like a super successful guy. And he was saying um, he has, he had that he had free coach, you know? It's like, well, of course, I'm going to get myself one, you know, to be like, not because at that moment I was very, stuck like you know uh, feeling this burnout not a lot of energy and for me not feeling with energy was very concerning um you know it's like okay if this yeah, it's like okay successful people um they have coach i'm gonna get myself one and and so i did but this is the thing is you do it you do it. It's, it's the doing. It's the yeah. doing. For me, it's the doing. It's easy. I'm a doer. And and I guess maybe that's the thing for you that you know getting to this doer thing is difficult. Uh, for me, I have to stop this because I want to do so much that I burn out. 
So it's just the other, it's the opposite. Um, and my learning is to stop and your learning is to keep the motivation up. Yeah. Well, you're a very cool mom. <laughs> you are, you, you're a cool mom, you're a cool mom. Yeah. Well, Dr. Uh, let me try and get your name because I'm, 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 I might butcher it, but Dr. Nails. 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 Candela, I want to thank you for thank you. giving me so much of your precious time today because I know how much you value your time. So I appreciate every minute that you have given me, you know, um, and I wish you all the best. And on behalf of all the patients and animals that you have helped and are going to help with all your future uh, projects, you know, your mentorship, your masters, your courses to really um, scale and influence more vets and, and parents to do what you do. Thank you so much for all that you do. Mm, thank you. Thank you. It's, um, it's nice to hear. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do what I do. Um, and thank you, thank you very much for inviting me. Hopefully this uh, will inspire someone. Um, thank you for um, giving people like me a voice. Um, and as I said before, we were starting, you know, we all have a role here. I have my role, uh, which is, you know, I do what I do and I will have the impact I will have, uh, whatever it is. And then what you do has an impact, you know, it's spreading this, this word and, 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 and inspiring people. Uh, so thank you very much for, for what you do as well, because all we have a role and it's all equally important. Um, and, you know, the longer this goes on, the more people will be contributing like you and I. Um, and there will be a point, it's probably about, it's about five years time, I think. I think in five years, there will be a very significant change um, in this whole movement, you'll see. And in 10 years, it will be completely different. <laughs>